The 2024 Senate race is poised to be a pivotal chapter in the American political landscape, particularly as the Democratic Party faces the daunting task of defending a substantial number of seats, 23 out of the 34 Senate positions that are up for election. This situation is further complicated by the fact that 8 out of the 10 most competitive races are located in states that Donald Trump won decisively in both the 2016 and 2020 presidential elections. Consequently, the current political dynamics suggest a notable advantage for the Republican Party, with Decision Desk HQ providing a forecast indicating a 71% chance that Republicans could flip the majority in the Senate. This optimistic outlook is mirrored in prediction markets such as BET Online, where the data suggests that Republicans hold a slightly better probability of approximately 75-80% to 80 for reclaiming control over the chamber. To effectively navigate and analyze this complex electoral landscape, it is essential to categorize the safe seats for both parties, beginning with those states where the likelihood of victory exceeds a considerable threshold of 95%. For the Democrats, these secure states encompass Washington, California, and Hawaii, alongside New Mexico, Minnesota, New York, Vermont, Maine, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, New Jersey, Delaware, and Virginia. The majority of these states are anticipated to vote for Kamala Harris by a significant margin of at least 10 points thus creating a favorable environment for the Democratic ticket as the election unfolds. While Virginia and Minnesota are notable exceptions, the latter is represented by the incumbent Democratic Senator Amy Klobuchar, who boasts an impressive electoral history, having been re-elected in 2018 with a substantial 60% of the vote. Klobuchar's historical performance illustrates her substantial appeal across a diverse voter base, having never lost a race by less than 20 points. Turning our attention to Virginia, we find Democratic Senator Tim Kaine holding a similarly robust electoral track record, having secured his last election victory by 16 points and consistently polling ahead of his Republican challenger by double-digit margins throughout the 2024 race. Given these solid foundations, the 14 states listed effectively ensure that Democrats are positioned to secure at least 42 Senate seats, making it challenging to envision a scenario where they would fall below this threshold once all votes are counted. On the Republican side, the safe states include North Dakota, Wyoming, and Utah, as well as the special election in Nebraska, alongside Missouri, Tennessee, Mississippi, West Virginia, and Indiana. These regions have demonstrated solid support for Republican candidates at the presidential level, lacking any notable factors that might render them competitive in the current election cycle. An important point of interest is West Virginia, which is set to undergo a flip due to the retirement of Democratic incumbent Joe Manchin. His exit opens the door for Republican Governor Jim Justice, who is anticipated to achieve a landslide victory in a state that leans heavily toward Trump, reflecting the broader national trend. Interestingly, I have refrained from categorizing Nebraska's regular election as a safe Republican seat. Recent polling data has revealed that independent candidate Dan Osborne is either within the margin of error or, in certain instances, leading the Republican incumbent, Deb Fisher. Fisher's unpopularity, even among her own party, adds an additional layer of uncertainty to this race. While it would be surprising if she were to lose her seat, the prevailing circumstances justify a cautious approach that prevents us from assigning a definitive categorization at this juncture. This reality leaves the Republicans with a total of 47 seats, just three short of achieving a potential majority. In the event that Trump defeats Kamala Harris in the presidential race, his running mate, J.D. Vance, would cast the tie-breaking vote in the Senate. However, even if Trump were to lose, Republicans would still need to secure victories in just four out of the remaining 11 contested races to clinch a majority. It is crucial to emphasize that five of these races are situated in states that Trump won in 2020, while the other five are in states where Biden emerged victorious by narrow margins of less than three points. A significant consideration in this electoral cycle is the noticeable decline of split-ticket voting among the electorate. Over the past decade, only five U.S. senators represent states that favored the opposing party's presidential candidate in the most recent election. This stands in stark contrast to the political landscape just 12 years ago when more than 20 such senators existed. This dramatic shift highlights a broader trend in which voters are increasingly resistant to supporting candidates from different parties for various offices. This reality serves to heighten the difficulties facing Democrats as they endeavor to retain their slim majority of 51 to 49 in the Senate. Now, let us delve into the 11 competitive races that will play a critical role in shaping the outcome of the 2024 Senate elections. We will rate each race based on the latest polling data while also elaborating on the specific circumstances surrounding each contest. We begin with Ohio where polls are scheduled to close at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. In this state, Democratic incumbent Sherrod Brown is seeking a fourth term against Republican nominee Bernie Moreno, a businessman with a background in the private sector. Brown's situation is particularly noteworthy given Ohio's recent political shift toward a more Republican-leaning environment. Despite this trend, he has managed to maintain his position in office due to his broad cross-party appeal and strong support from voters across various demographics. In 2018, he won re-election by a notable margin of 8 percentage points, while the state's gubernatorial race tilted toward Republican Mike DeWine by a smaller margin of 4 points. The prevailing atmosphere in Ohio appears challenging for Brown, especially since Trump won the state by a decisive 8 points in the 2020 election, a trend that is expected to continue in November. 
For Brown to emerge victorious in this contest, he will likely need to outperform Kamala Harris by at least eight points, an ambitious goal in a state that has increasingly leaned toward the Republican side in recent years. Nevertheless, he may benefit from the fact that his opponent, Moreno, was viewed as the least electable candidate in the Republican primary. Nonetheless, he managed to secure the nomination with Trump's endorsement, which may complicate the race further. The latest polling data from YouGov and Bowling Green University indicates that Brown is currently leading Moreno by four points among a substantial sample of 8,000 likely voters surveyed between September 18th and 27th. This polling result is consistent with the overall polling average, which indicates that Brown holds a two-point lead over his opponent. Given this context, Ohio will be categorized as leaning in favor of Brown and the Democrats, making it a crucial race for the party's aspirations to retain a majority in the Senate. Next on our radar is Pennsylvania, where polls will close at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Pennsylvania is a key battleground on both the presidential and Senate maps, yet the Senate race has not attracted the same level of attention as the presidential contest. Incumbent Democrat Bob Casey Jr. is seeking re-election and is widely regarded as one of the strongest candidates in this electoral cycle. Since his first statewide election as state auditor in 1996, Casey has not lost a race by less than nine points, including a robust victory margin of 13 points in his most recent election in 2018. However, the dynamics of the 2024 Senate race are shaping up to be tighter than anticipated. The latest polling data from OnMessage Incorporated reveals that Casey is leading Republican nominee Dave McCormick by a slim one-point margin among 800 likely voters surveyed. This narrow lead indicates that the race could be more competitive than previously expected. The tightening of this race mirrors the overall trend, with Casey holding an average lead of approximately 3.7% across a comprehensive analysis of 86 surveys. Historically, Casey's strength may have been bolstered by favorable political environments during past election cycles. However, it is important to note that he is currently only outperforming Kamala Harris by about three points, less than some of his Democratic counterparts in other battleground states. Consequently, for the time being, Pennsylvania will be categorized as tilting blue on our projections, favoring Casey and the Democratic Party in this critical electoral contest. In Maryland, we find a race that is typically dominated by Democratic candidates, making it an interesting case to observe. Maryland is one of the bluest states in the nation, having voted for Biden by an astounding 33 percentage points in 2020, marking one of his strongest performances across the country. The state has not elected a Republican to the Senate in more than 40 years. However, the retirement of the Democratic incumbent has injected a new level of intrigue into this race. The Republicans have nominated former Governor Larry Hogan, who boasts a remarkable reputation as one of the most popular governors in the nation, having exited office with nearly 80 percent approval ratings. Hogan's prior success in statewide elections has raised concerns among Democrats regarding their ability to hold this seat. Nevertheless, the latest poll from the University of Maryland shows Democratic nominee Angela also Brooks leading her Republican opponent by a margin of 11 points among likely voters surveyed between September 19th and 23rd. While Hogan is certainly facing significant challenges, he will need to outperform Trump's numbers in Maryland by around 30 points to make the race competitive. Even a single-digit loss would still be regarded as a strong showing for him in such a solidly Democratic state. Therefore, Maryland remains firmly in the safe blue column for now, with also Brooks holding a commanding lead. As we turn our attention to Florida, we see Republican incumbent Rick Scott seeking a second term after a narrow victory in 2018. In that election, he unseated then-incumbent Democrat Bill Nelson by a razor-thin margin of just 0.2%, making it one of the closest races in the country. Initially, the 2024 race was anticipated to be less competitive, given Florida's significant shift toward the Republican side in recent years. For example, both Governor Ron DeSantis and Senator Marco the 2024 Senate elections represent a significant crossroads for American politics, particularly for the Democratic Party, as it attempts to defend a substantial number of seats in an environment that increasingly favors Republican candidates. The electoral landscape is heavily influenced by demographic shifts, voter sentiment, and the historical context of previous elections, creating a complex battleground that could reshape the political landscape for years to come. Key takeaways from the current Senate race include the overwhelming challenge that Democrats face in maintaining their slim majority. With 23 of the 34 seats being contested, the Democratic Party finds itself in a precarious position, especially given that many of these races are taking place in states that Trump carried in both the 2016 and 2020 elections. The statistics underscore the uphill battle Democrats must navigate. Eight of the 10 most competitive races are situated in these Republican strongholds. This reality highlights the increasing polarization of American politics, where voters in traditionally Democratic regions have shifted their support toward the Republican Party, reflecting broader national trends. The notion of safe seats has become critical in understanding the current electoral dynamics. Democrats can count on a solid base in states like California, New York, and Virginia, but these alone may not be enough to secure a majority in the Senate. Their reliance on these strongholds points to a potential vulnerability, 
If they fail to mobilize voters in battleground states, they risk losing their grip on the Senate. On the flip side, Republicans appear to have a more straightforward path to a majority. Given their solid footing in states such as North Dakota, Wyoming, and Utah, alongside the notable opportunity to capitalize on Joe Manchin's retirement in West Virginia. The implications of these electoral dynamics extend beyond the immediate races. Should Republicans regain control of the Senate, they could significantly impact legislative agendas, shaping policies on critical issues such as health care, climate change, and social justice. The potential for a Republican majority could lead to a period of heightened partisanship, as Democrats would likely face substantial obstacles in advancing their legislative priorities. Conversely, if Democrats manage to maintain their majority, it could embolden their efforts to push forward a progressive agenda, particularly if they are able to secure key victories in swing states. A critical aspect of the current race is the phenomenon of declining split-ticket voting. The diminishing willingness of voters to support candidates from opposing parties for different offices signifies a broader ideological entrenchment that complicates the electoral landscape. This trend serves to entrench the divisions between the two major parties, making it increasingly challenging for candidates to cross the aisle and appeal to a wider electorate. The consequences of this trend could be far-reaching, as it may lead to further polarization within the Senate itself, hindering the potential for bipartisan cooperation on pressing national issues. As we assess the individual races, the competitive nature of these elections is evident. States like Ohio and Pennsylvania are crucial to understanding the shifts in voter sentiment and party loyalty. For instance, Sherrod Brown's potential re-election in Ohio highlights his ability to resonate with a diverse voter base, but the state's recent trends toward Republican candidates pose significant challenges. Similarly, Bob Casey in Pennsylvania faces a tightening race, demonstrating that even historically safe Democratic seats are now under serious threat. Maryland offers a unique case study, where the retirement of a long-standing Democratic incumbent has opened the door for a more competitive landscape, even in a solidly blue state. The nomination of Larry Hogan, a popular former governor, indicates that Democrats cannot take any seat for granted, even in states where they have dominated for decades. This potential vulnerability reinforces the necessity for Democrats to mobilize their base and address the concerns of moderate voters who may be swayed by charismatic Republican candidates. In Florida, the dynamics are particularly compelling. Rick Scott's incumbency is under threat from former Congresswoman Debbie Mukersell Powell, a contest that could reveal much about the evolving political sentiments in a state that has become increasingly Republican in recent years. The closeness of this race exemplifies how critical voter turnout and engagement will be, especially among demographics that lean Democratic but may be disengaged or apathetic. The sentiment surrounding the election cycle is one of heightened anxiety and urgency among Democrats, particularly as they confront the stark reality of potential losses in key battleground states. The stakes are exceptionally high, not only for the party's immediate electoral fortunes, but also for the broader trajectory of American governance. Many Democrats are acutely aware that losing control of the Senate could result in a stagnation of their legislative agenda and a reversal of many policies they have fought to implement in recent years. The overall atmosphere is charged with a sense of urgency as candidates work to galvanize their bases while also attempting to reach out to independents and moderate Republicans who may be disillusioned with the current state of affairs. This dual approach is critical, as the ability to secure votes from these demographics could be the difference between victory and defeat in several close races. The consequences of the 2024 Senate elections will reverberate beyond the immediate results. A Republican takeover could pave the way for a more conservative legislative agenda, which would not only affect national policy, but also shape the political discourse heading into the next presidential election. Conversely, if Democrats succeed in holding on to their majority, it could embolden their progressive base and encourage a more assertive approach to governance. In sum, the 2024 Senate elections encapsulate a broader narrative of American politics marked by polarization shifting voter allegiances, and the increasing significance of demographic factors. The stakes are high, and the outcomes of these races will not only determine the composition of the Senate, but also influence the legislative landscape for years to come. As both parties navigate these complex dynamics, the importance of voter mobilization, strategic messaging, and addressing the concerns of a diverse electorate will be paramount. The consequences of this election cycle will ultimately set the stage for the future of American governance and the ongoing struggle for control of the political narrative in a rapidly changing landscape.